But good morning, PAC. Would you stand with us this morning as we sing and as we worship? of is that Jesus is the Lamb of God. And that doesn't mean that he's weak. And that doesn't mean that he's fragile. What it means is that he is the perfect sacrifice once and for all for our sin. Scripture says that there can be no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. In the Old Testament, they would have to sacrifice again and again and again to atone for their sin. But then Jesus came. 
and he came as fully God and fully man. He lived, he died, and he rose to pay for our sin, to atone for our sin, and to reconcile us to God once and for all. Amen? So we're gonna sing a song that declares that truth together.
And you brought me from the darkness into glorious light. Glorious light. And go read to his name. Go. We're going to continue in our worship this morning. Um, But, you know, throughout the weekend, as I was praying for this church service, I was praying for this weekend, I just kept getting this feeling, this conviction that some of you are in here this morning, and your prayer this morning, as you pulled yourself out of bed and as you got ready, and for maybe some of you, is like wrangling your kids in the car and getting their shoes on. But this prayer, this thought that said, God, if you don't speak directly to me this morning, I'm not sure that you're active in my life. And I know that this morning we come in and we lift up our praises and some of you are singing and you think if I sing louder, if I give all my yeses and amens, then maybe God will respond. And the Lord hears and he sees your faithfulness that you showed up this morning even if you're angry, even if you said you're done, And so when you're hurting, our whole church hurts alongside of you. Because Acts 2 describes the church as one heart, one soul. And that doesn't seem like something that's common with the current church because we feel all so divided, but the church was called to be one heart, one soul. And so in that, we are going to contend, we are going to fight, we are going to intercede for our church. We're gonna celebrate with our church. So we're gonna take this moment to praise God for what he's done for the people here in this room this morning, as well as continue to come before the throne of God and ask our God on his throne for our friends, our brothers, our sisters next to us. So I have some praise reports this morning and, and some of these are incredible praise reports, but we have had people submit responses saying that the prayers they ask for healing have been answered, that there has been health for their family. That Jesus is still healing today. We have had some ask us to pray for their children, for their children's faith, for their children to thrive in their schools in the new school year. And we've gotten praise reports that their children are thriving. We also have one story of this uh, recently of the Chinese group, and they had someone brand new give their yes to Jesus. And so this is a reminder, church, that God hears our prayer. He heard the prayer you prayed this morning while you're putting on your shoes or you're trying to get that sip of coffee in. And he hears the prayers that we as a corporate broad body lift up. And so some of the prayer requests that have been coming in, um, we have a lot of people that are asking for prayers for, for how they're doing in school, looking for new job opportunities, looking for new opportunities, praying for open doors. And so as we take a time to pray together, I'm just gonna encourage you, you can either open up your hands. I like to put my hand on my heart. You could fold your hands, however, to put yourself in a posture where we are gonna be one heart and one soul this morning and contend for the body. And so Lord God, for those that are praying for open doors, those that are praying for new job opportunities, those who are leaning in in hope but maybe feeling defeated right now, God, for those very people that lifted those prayer requests, We pray that they would hear your voice. They would see images of you making a way, splitting the sea of all the obstacles and challenges. We pray, Lord, that in this upcoming week, that there would be phone calls for interviews, that there would be conversations in the schools, that there would be someone that would pop up out of nowhere and say, I have this incredible opportunity for you. And so we would know, God, that it was you. We have more prayer requests for healing. 
A lot of uh, people in our church with sickness or pain or contending for people in their lives. And so if you are someone that actually needs healing, I'm just gonna invite you again to just open up your hands to just receive. And so Lord, right now we come as one body, one heart, one soul as your bride, Lord. And Lord, we believe that you are our healer. We believe that by your stripes we are healed and we believe there's still sickness in this world, there's still pain in this world. But we know, God, that you hear us from heaven. And so, Lord, we pray for our friends. We pray for our family. We pray for those that aren't even in this church because it's too physically painful or they're not able to. We pray wherever they are right now that the room would suddenly feel brighter, that a warmth would fill the room, that there would be conversations later to say, you prayed for me this morning, didn't you? Because I felt something shift in the room. We pray, Jesus, that the very scarred hands of Jesus would touch those that are sick and hurting this morning. We just plead the blood of Jesus and we ask, would would you come and would your presence and your light be so powerful, so bright that sickness would flee in the name of Jesus? And even for some who have not submitted requests for healing, but it's on their hearts, maybe it's their children, maybe it's the new fall season, maybe it's something new that came up this week, We pray for the power of Jesus right now. And uh, a lot of you have been submitting prayer requests, just trying to surrender more to God, trying to surrender more to Him and His active work in your life. And so again, if that's you, just open up your hands. And Lord, I wanna praise you that the prayer on our church's heart is to surrender more to you, is to humble ourselves before you. Lord, that's a prayer on my own heart, that I could surrender everything to you. And so Lord, as we come to the feet of Jesus, help us to see the scarred feet of Jesus. Help us to see the feet that have gone to the places, to the dirty places, to the broken places, and you're still walking and meeting us here today. Lord, for anyone here this morning that is lifting up that prayer, saying, God, if you don't speak to me directly this morning, I'm done. Open up their ears, Lord, because I believe you are speaking. So Lord, we know that your presence is here. It's everywhere, it's active. But we spend this morning, we devote this morning to inviting you fully into our minds and our hearts. We pray that you would make manifest your presence this morning. So we would leave here knowing, yes, the Lord did speak, and yes, the Lord is good. So we praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen.
truly what we want what we desire we long to be with you to feel you near and God I pray that this morning whatever anyone may have walked in with whether they're full of joy whether they're broken hearted would we just feel you near would we just feel your presence here in this place God would it just be so tangible that we feel like we could just reach out and touch you God you are holy, you are good, you are so good to us. We don't have to be afraid, we don't have to feel shame. Everything you did on that cross was for us. And we just love you so much for it. Would you just be here this morning? We thank you, we praise you. In your name, amen. Hey church, I'm Matt. And I'm Tanya, and this is Church News. If you're new to church, we're so happy you're here. Make sure to stop by our Connection Center where our team would love to meet you, answer any questions you have, and give you a gift for just saying hi. If you're online, a special shout out to you for joining us today. If you came prepared to give, thank you. You can also do so online by text or by placing your gift in the offering basket as it comes by today. Thank you so much for your continued giving. During our services, you'll experience a pastor-led prayer for our congregation. If you're here with us on campus, you'll find prayer and praise cards in front of you. If you want to share a prayer or something big going on in your life, fill one out and drop in one of the white buckets as you exit the sanctuary today. Coming up on October 22nd is a big day for PAC. That day, we'll have a service at 1030 for our lead pastor installation for Pastor Alex Chang. Following that service, we invite you to stay for our free outdoor barbecue and our annual Kids Fall Fest. While this event and food are free, registration is required as we anticipate a large number in attendance. The last day to register is October 12th, so make sure you go to our website to register where you can also find more information about the leadership transition going on. Today is another Say Yes Sunday. Now is your chance to say yes to serving in our local community. You can either meet some of our team outside in the cafe after service or jump on the website to learn more. For families with young children, we have a baby dedication service coming up on November 5th. Here at church, we believe that raising up children who love Jesus takes a village. So, if you're committed to dedicating your child to Jesus, we want to make that commitment with you as a community. Registration is due today. So, for more information and to register now, make sure you go to our website. And finally, we want you to know about a couple of ways you can make a difference in our community. First, the blood drive is taking place next Monday, May 9th. If you're able to, we'd encourage you to register at the Red Cross at princetonalliance.org slash redcross. Second, New Jersey has a growing community of refugees and we've partnered with Alliance for Refugees to build out what we're calling Good Neighbor Teams. If you're interested in learning more, make sure you register today for their orientation and interest meeting on Saturday, October 14th. All right, that's it for Church News. See you next time. Bye. So good morning. Nice to see you. I'm glad for those of you who are joining us online as well. Um, I'm going to speak here for a couple minutes, but I'd like to ask Kristen Bowen and her team if they would come up here while I'm talking. Um, if there's anything 
that you should know about Princeton Alliance Church if you have been here any length of time at all is that two things are for sure. We want us all, why don't you just come around behind me and then you can sneak up in a minute. Um, we want you all and all of us together to love the Lord our God with all our mind, body, soul, and heart, okay? And we also wanna love our neighbors ourselves. And everything we do is based off of that. And that's why when we have this, what we call Say Yes campaign, and we're looking for people to volunteer, it takes both. It takes both a love for people, but also a love for Jesus. Because we want to share our love with other people. We want to do it in Jesus' name. And that's the way it's going to produce the most fruit. So, fruit. so you can sign up for a ministry within the church, but you'll also find lots of organizations with booths out here that we support because they have the same philosophy. One of those we want to celebrate today. It's a special moment today with Hearts and Homes. Hearts and Homes began at the very beginning of covid so imagine trying to start an organization at the beginning of COVID, but that's what happened because Kristen Bowen, and some of you know her, she used to be a staff member here, heard from God and wanted her to develop, in my own words, I don't think she's ever called it this, but to me, it's a furniture gifting organization. And there's lots of places you can go to if you're setting up a home and you don't have furniture and you can pick up free furniture, but it's very different from that. It's not a furniture place where you can, they'll just say, okay, you need a table, a bed, and a chair. Here they are, take them. It's really about interior decorating. They really wanna help people set up their first home, usually families or individuals coming out of traumatic situations, war veterans, refugees, people that are coming off the street for the very first time, and they wanna set them up right, and so they take the good furniture, they refinish it so it looks immaculate, and then they do matching rooms. It's incredible to see what they've done. That all started, during COVID, and since the building was shut down, we actually could help Kristen a lot because we used the great room, and we, the place was packed with furniture. All the rooms we now teach our kids in was stuffed with all different kinds of furniture. But praise God, it continued to grow. Volunteers continued to be raised up. They found a place in Cranberry, and what we're celebrating today is the fact that they are now on their own. They'll be always in relationship with us, but they've become their own non-for-profit organization, Hearts and Homes. And we wanna celebrate that moment and have a prayer of commissioning for them. We believe in this. We believe not just in the ministry God has called us directly at PAC, but also developing and supporting those organizations which are also reaching and loving people with the love of Jesus. So that's what we're gonna to celebrate today. Before I do that, I wanna hand the mic over to Kristen and you to, for you to introduce your leadership team. So before I introduce this incredible team, I just want to say thank you to all of you um, for supporting us and praying for us and cheering for us and serving with us. And um, it's been an incredible journey. Um, I want to personally thank Pastor Boyd and his leadership team and the governing board as well. Um, it's a big day for us, a little emotional. Uh, but thank you um, very much from the bottom of our hearts. Um, and let me take a moment to introduce to you then um, Reba Alexander, Miriam Kamal, Drew Idavoy, and Neele Vashi. And we also have one board member who's in Pennsylvania today. His name is Chuck Hopper. So we'll give Chuck a shout out online. So all of it, yes, praise God. So all of you step forward a little bit. And if you could stand with me for this prayer of commissioning, please put your hands out and bless them as I lead us in this prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for how you work in our lives. And we thank you, first of all, for Kristen, who listened to your voice. And you asked her to do something she had no idea what to do with in the beginning. But you have led her every step of the way. And we can see your hand of blessing on this organization, on her, on her staff, and on all the volunteers. Lord, we do pray that you would continue to bless them, Lord. We know you will, we know you're with them, but we ask for even more blessing 
that you would watch over them, that you would give them all the supplies, all the resources, all the provision they need, that you would keep their hearts centered on you, that you would lead them to places where they not only meet really practical needs of families who are setting up their home for the first time, but also the need that they have spiritually to know you. Lord, continue to use them, provide for everything they need. So today we just celebrate. We celebrate in all the steps that you've brought them through to this point in this commissioning. And so we indeed do commission them in the name of the Father and the Son and in the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, amen. Thank you guys. Yeah. You can be seated. You know what? And before we move on, I actually meant to do this and I forgot. Are there people here today who volunteer? If you volunteer with Hearts and Homes, could you stand up for a minute? Anybody here who's volunteering? It's hard for me to see, but I know we do. Yeah. And that's why I wanted you to see that we have lots of people who attend here who volunteer for that. Well, we have a guest speaker this morning. I'm really thrilled to introduce him. He's a personal friend of mine, but he's a really special guy. He's special in the kingdom as well. This is a guy who was a postal worker for most of his life, right? Now, if you're a postal worker, it's not a real easy job, but at least they take care of you. And if you retire as a postal worker, you get a pretty nice uh, pension that goes along with it. But all the time he's working as a postal worker, he's hearing God's voice about people on the street, people that he's passing as he's delivering the mail. Who's going to reach these people? Who's going to do it? And he just thought that Lord was speaking directly from him. And so he started getting involved in that in all his free time. And eventually he said, you know what? I need to do this full time. So he left that job in order to start this ministry that we call Street Church Ministries to minister to those who are just living on the street. And I've invited him to come and talk to us about that. So please, would you welcome my friend, Tony Palumbo. Thank you, bro. Yeah, perfect. Well, good morning. So I think the first order, um, you know, of business is this. Everyone knows my name now, but I don't know your name. So that's not fair. So it just doesn't work that way. So on the count of three, everybody's going to tell me your name, okay? You ready for this? Here we go. Let's see how it goes. One, two, three. It's nice to meet you. So uh, just a brief, brief introduction of who I am. I am Tony Palumbo. Um, I've been doing ministry on the streets in Philadelphia and in Trenton since 2005. Well, actually, since 1994, man, my wife and I began in Manhattan. So we would just pack a bag with food and whatever, socks and underwear, visit people on the streets, you know, on 42nd Street, and just say hi and pray with them and go take care of some of their physical needs. So fast forward to, nine, to 2005, I began to go into the subways um, of Philadelphia. I began to go into Camden and then Trenton. And we would really go out and try and just meet people who were in tough situations, whether they were living outside, you know, in garbage cans or underneath bridges or inside of tents, just to go build like relationships with, with uh, them. So fast forward to, to 2016, I somehow, I got a team together of maybe five or six people. I visited a couple churches, I got a little team and we began our first church plant inside of it you know, a tiny little, a tiny little like apartment building in Trenton, in, you know, inside of a bigger building. So we gutted it and we furnished it. It became a house church. It was real cozy. And we did meetings and groups and services and outreaches from there. 2021, we began an outreach ministry in Trenton. I rented a brand new property and we did all sorts of things there. We did some things that I'm proud of and some things that I'm not so proud of. <laughs> so what we major, so, so really we see a lot of people in and out of crisis situation, in and out of alcoholism, addiction, and you know, like mental health services. So we run, um, I run mental health groups. I, um, I do leadership and mentorship groups. ESL class is for the community recovery groups because it seems like everybody in Trenton is getting high. 
That's just the way it is in Trenton. So we run recovery groups and we send people up to recovery programs. And somehow our place, and don't ask me how, it becomes a church on Sunday morning. You know, a different kind of a church, right? So it's really informal. It's about 20 people inside of a coffee house kind of a church vibe in the inner city of Trenton. And you guys are a part of that church. I want to thank Bonnie and Boyd. So I've known Bonnie now for about 10 years. And I met Boyd a few years ago. And uh, you guys have been instrumental in what God has been doing in our ministry. So we can't, could not do it without you guys. So, and uh, that is very, very sincere. <laughs> and so, so that's a brief little thing about me, a brief little thing about our ministry. So what I want, to, so, so I want to talk about something for the next 20 to 25 minutes that's, that I'm recently relearning. And you know how they say that everything important in life you learn in kindergarten? Well, God has been bringing me back to kindergarten because I need to unlearn a lot of the things that I've learned over the 30 years of following Jesus. And it's been wonderful. It's the best time in my life. I'm 55. You know, I know I don't look a day over 54, <laughs> but it is true. And, 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 and you know, God has been... Um, He's been doing wonderful things in my life. It's the best time in my life. It's the best time in my marriage. It's the best time in my relationship in ministry with my friends who I have here. Shout out to all of my friends. Man, my, you know, love you guys. And uh, it's, it's just the best time in my life. Yeah, you can clap for them. What the heck? So, yeah. So, but you know what? Pretty much it's because I've learned a few things and I'm gonna share a few things I've learned. Number one and, and, and this is just something I'm getting. I know that we all understand it in, you know, in theory, but this is something I'm just in, you know, in really, really internalizing. God does not love the more improved version of you. He just doesn't. And I'm just getting that. You know, it's like, you know, he's not waiting for the better you to arrive. He just wants all of you, right? And I'm just getting that. Number two is I was born in 1968. God was doing fine before 1968. <laughs> he did not need Tony Palumbo. He was doing just fine without me. As John the Baptist said, that he can take a rock and turn it into a child of Abraham. So what does he need Tony Palumbo for? Number three is, um, it's a Mother Teresa quote, I think, but it says, there are no big things that you can do for God, only little things done in great love. And I'm finally getting that truth. So I've done ministry for years and years. I'm a doer by nature. I don't know if you guessed, but well, you could probably talk, be, tell because I talk with my hands and I'm Italian and Italian people have to talk with their hands or else I'm not allowed to be Italian anymore, right? <laughs> you know, I get kicked out of the club. So, you know, when Italian people, people are doers by nature. We, we, we just like, tell me what to do and I'll get it done. Like I'm the guy who can get it done, right? I'm driven which can be good and bad. But, um, and I used to do ministry from a checklist. I used to, you know, Tuesday night, you know, after work, I would go lead a group. I would do this, I'd do this. You know, I had my checklist. Now I realize, you know, I have a different kind of a checklist. It's called my motive and my intention checklist. That's the only checklist I live by now. Like, wh wh why am I doing what I'm doing? Like, what are my intentions and motives? That's the only checklist, that's the only checklist I think that matters. So, so in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, um, in verse number 14, the Apostle Paul says something. He says, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, therefore all died. So I'm a firm believer that, well, it's kind of what Jesus said, right? If you give a cup of water, you know, to a little one's hands, you will not lose your reward. I'm a firm believer in one cup of water that's given in love outweighs in God's eyes a thousand sermons, you know, in front of 500 people without love. I'm a firm believer in that. 
that, you know, it's what compels us that worships God. It's not the act that we do. Like, what are we compelled? You know, and we, we live in a middle ground. We're always looking for the middle ground. Show me where the middle ground is, right? Like, is there gray? There's no gray area or middle ground in the kingdom of God. Like, you're either compelled by the love of God. You are either, you are, you know, uh, we are either compelled by love for God and from God, or we're not. There's no middle ground, period. So when my kids were young, uh, they were like two and four, and I'm very grateful that they're not. So, so I just became an empty nester, so give me applause. For, give, give me a round, of, give my wife. So I, I, so I highly recommend it. Food tastes better. <laughs> I highly suggest it. So, 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 um, but when they were younger, right, I, you know, I was looking for a church, right? I was looking for a church for the family to join. This is 20 some years ago. And, you know, it's got to fit certain checkpoints, right? It's got to have the criteria. It's got to mark off certain things. So there's a church in the Bible that marks them off. We're going to read about it. It's, it's um, in Revelations chapter 2. It's the church of Ephesus. And, and I'm going to read from verses 2 through 5. <laughs> so here's what it says. I know your works. I know your toil and your patient endurance and that you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have, you have actually tested those who call themselves apostles and are not and found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my namesake and you have not grown weary, but I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love that you had at first. Remember from where you have fallen. Repent and do the works that you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from you. So let's break it down. I know your works. So he says, I know your works. So this is, this, this is not a church who's just coming, coming on Sunday and Wednesday night Bible study sitting in the pews. I mean, they're getting it done. This is a hearts and homes church. This is a ministry church. This is an active church. They're rolling up their sleeves. They're digging in their you know, heels. They're getting themselves dirty for the kingdom of God. They're getting it done. I know your works. Number two, that you cannot tolerate those who are evil. Okay? So what does that mean, right? That means that they know their Bible. They have sound doctrine, right? They can, they can spot a false apostle, right? They can, they can spot a false teacher a mile away. Man, this is just gonna get in the way, so. See you later, water. So, right, they can, they can spot a false teacher a mile away. Why? Because they know their Bible. They have sound doctrine. That's, I mean, check one, check two. Come on. Number three, they cannot, that you cannot, I lost my space, bear with me, that you cannot bear with those who are evil. You cannot bear with those who are evil. So what that says in my eyes is that they are pursuing holiness. Like they recognize evil for what it is, right? and they're pursuing another way. They can't be, what does light and darkness have in common, right? That's what the word says. Like they see that, and, you know, when they're like no to evil and yes to holiness. Another check, right? I mean, you know, if I'm on their website, man, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, where do I join? This is the church for us. And number four is the best one. They're enduring patiently, bearing up for my namesake. Enduring patiently, bearing up for my namesake. So number one, they are bearing up under hardships of life. And we all have them. They're bearing up under the trouble and hardships of life. Number two, they're bearing up under the, their own inner compulsion of sin right? Whether that's lust or anger or selfishness, like we all, we all have a bent towards it. We're all innerly, right? That inner compulsion of sin, they're bearing up under that. And number three, they are enduring patiently. They are, they, you know, are, they, they, um, 
um, you know, are bearing up under the worldly <coughs> sinful culture. Number three, they're bearing up under the sinful culture of that particular time, okay? I don't know why we, you know, why we, most people think that, you know, things have never been as bad as they are in 2023, like, nobody knows how hard it is. Nobody knows how sinful the culture is, right? Like, things are, are, you know, so hard now. Well, you know what? This is what the truth is. Nobody here has to worry about your house being looted or burned down because of your faith in Jesus Christ. That was a thing there. That was a thing in that day. And that's a thing now in many, many parts of the world. Nobody here has to worry about that. They're bearing up under that. Okay? They're bearing up under that. You know, that, that there were Christians who were being burned alive in Nero's garden. Where do you think the term Roman candles comes from? Because Nero, as lots of theologians say, lined up Christians in his garden and he burned them alive from the feet up as human torches. Ain't no human torches in this room. They're bearing up in that world, okay? They're bearing up. It's always been bad. I mean, heck, you know, there's 1,189 chapters in the Bible. There's 31,101 verses. It only took four chapters and 88 verses for the first murder to happen, right? Times have always been rough. It only took six chapters for God to wipe out everybody on the planet other than eight people. Six chapters out of 1,189. Things has always been rough, okay? Noah's Ark. So, so you know, have, has anybody here ever seen like a nursery room for like a baby and there's a picture of Noah's Ark and you see the, the, the ark and the boat and, you know, and the elephants and the cute little animals, man, with their, right, right? Like, that's not what should be on the wall. What should be on the wall is thousands of people gasping for air, drowning, that's what the story's about. Not little cute little fuzzy donkeys. It times has always been bad. This is a church that was bearing up under that weight. I mean, show me where to join. Where do I sign? I want to go to a small group here. But then comes the one critique, and the critique, you know, and it's devastating. This one critique wipes out everything I just said. It's devastating. It says this, but you have abandoned your first love. And then it comes with a threat. If you don't get back on track, I'm gonna remove my presence from you. So go ahead, go ahead, Tone. Try and do ministry without me. Go ahead, right? I mean, that's a threat. That's no less than a threat. If you don't, Return to your first love, I'm gonna remove my presence from you. I mean, that's a, that one critique, it demolishes everything else I just said. So what does that mean for me? So, so what does that mean for my life? And I mean, you know, I can feed people, I can serve people, I can run, you know, an addiction recovery group, I can set people up in teen challenge, I can pay for people's rent, and I can still miss the boat, right? Like, I can visit churches and preach, and, and, you know, my, and, 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 you know, I can still miss the boat and miss the point. That's scary for me. And, you know, I know everyone, you know, I mean, a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, I know, Tone, love, 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 love. But love is the point. Like, when did love for God and from God become a trite thing? When did that become, how did that happen? When, when it just became so trite. When it's the point. 
you know, so in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, you all know what it says. And, you know, and I'm going to paraphrase, okay? The beginning of the chapter says, if I, if I have the ability where I can talk, I can speak every language on the planet Earth and even talk in the language of angels. Like, what does that look like, right? What does that sound? But just imagine that God gave me the ability to talk in the languages of angels, but I don't have love, then I'm like a clanging cymbals. Would anybody volunteer here for me to take two cymbals and walk up behind you and smash them in your ear? No, because that's a horrible sound. That's the sound of a person who's able to talk in angel language but doesn't love. Are you tracking with me? It's not pleasing to the ear. So, I mean, is this your perspective, right? You know, is this our perspective on ministry? Is this how we view volunteering and serving in ministry? Because our perspective makes all the difference in the world. Look at David and Goliath, right? I mean, the whole nation of Israel sees Goliath, right? And he's so big. And what do they do? They run for their life. He's so big. They get so afraid. What does David say? He's so big, I can't miss. Your perspective changes everything. Is this how you view your ministry and volunteering and serving? That's the question on the floor today. I've been married for, I've been, I, you know, if you all know me and if you know Debbie, then you'll know one thing. I married up. Take that to the bank. I married up. And that's saying it generously. Thank God that she has been patient, enduring with me. Because you guys see the best version of me, right? Like I can maybe, you know, I, I can talk with my hands. I can hold an audience. I know how to do this. This is not hard for me. But you don't really know me. She does. 28 and a half years. Married, man, my best friend. When we were engaged, you know, I remember... You know, she used to ride over to my house after work, like from an hour away. And, uh, you know, I used to wait outside for that little Nissan Sentra. It was a, no, 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 Nissan Sentra. I don't want to give out her age. But I used to wait for it. And, and when it was, when she was late, I used to get in my car and drive around the neighborhood, man, because I was so nervous. I just couldn't sit still. I waited for bated breath for my wife. And it's, it's that way now, again. Like, that's, you know. So to me, that's what saying yes to ministry and serving looks like. It's like David in Psalm 68, verse number one. He writes this out. He said, oh God, you are my God. I shall earnestly seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. The dudes in the Judean wilderness, there's no water. He's walking through the desert. Just, you know, I mean, what you want in, you know, what you would want in a desert after two days is a bottle of Poland Springs. The guy's like, I don't even want water. I just want you. Yeah, yeah, I'm thirsty. I can't drink, but I got a parched mouth. But all I want is you. All I want is you, God. More of you, more of you. I'm not hearing that language much. You know, that's the language of addicts. I work with addicts. I, I, I work with addicts, you know. You know, I tell them, I'm like, yeah, but you're going to lose your house. You're going to lose your kids. I know, I know, I know, but I got to have that drug. But you're going to lose your family. I know, I know, but I got to have that drug. That's the language. That's where I want to remain. That's where I want to be. It's like Moses after God tells him, and this is a superpower phrase, so don't get angry at me. I hope that you invite me back. It's, it's you know, in Exodus chapter 33, 33, God basically says, he goes up to Moses and says, you guys are a bunch of knuckleheads. You can have your promised land. I'm going to send an angel with you, but I'm not going to go with you because you've gotten on my last nerve, nerve, and I just might end you, okay? And what does Moses say? In Exodus chapter 33 and verse number 15, he says, if your presence does not go with us, Lord, do not send us up from here. 
Like, if God gave me what I want, like, what's, what's your dream in ministry, right? Like, yeah, Tone, come on, Tone, I'll give you the big church. I'll give you the big crowds. I'll give you the big audience, but I'm not going to go with you. Like, would I say no deal? That's not abandoning your first and primary love. That's where I want to be. So, you know, I'm just going to close in this, right? So, um, so everybody knows me in that verse. It's, you know, in sec, 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 it's um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17. If anybody is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Like, that verse in theory, in heaven's eyes, we are all new creatures. Perfect, holy and blameless in you know, his sight. But I don't know about you all. I don't much feel like a new creation five out of seven days. I want that to be a reality in my everyday life, in my ministry. When I think of that verse, I think of caterpillars. Yeah, I know, I'm a weird guy, but don't worry. I, I think of caterpillars. Everybody for the next minute, pretend that you are a caterpillar. Just, just go there, trust me, it'll be fine. Just pretend that you're a caterpillar and you're crawling around the same plot of dirt, the same plant, not moving with, you know, out of a five foot radius, day in and day out, just crawling in that dirt. And then one day you take a really long nap. And then you wake up and everything's transformed. You're no longer crawling on that plant. You're no longer at that same plant. You're, like, you're a different creature. You're in the air. Everything is different. Everything is transformed. That happens. Heart transformation, life transformation, ministry transformation effectiveness happens when we maintain the right motives and intentions. When Jesus is the great love of our lives, bar none. Trust me, there are no shortcuts. I've tried. I'm 30 years in this. There are no shortcuts. I'm, I'm so grateful that God has bringing me back to kindergarten now. And I'm so grateful I got an opportunity just to be here and share with you guys. I'm so grateful. I just want to pray. Just want to pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for any opportunity I get, Lord, to share your heart. And I, I, I pray that that's what would have happened, Lord, that I would have shared something of your heart and that you would have sowed something of your life inside of us, Lord, so that somebody, just one person maybe even, Lord, would walk out of these doors, just be a little bit different, a little bit more in love with you. Help us to maintain our motives, our intentions. Help them to have you, have, you know, as the great love of our life. And if we're not, knock us off our horses and get us back to that place. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Church, let's stand together as we sing, as we remind ourselves that we build our life on Christ and Christ alone.
church, let's make that our prayer. That he fill us with his heart and lead us in his love to those around us. Sing it out, I will. of God's people. Let's sing that again. Now you know why we support him, right? <laughs> it's 
Good to have you, Tony. Listen, if you want to talk to Tony more specifically about his ministry, we do send people down there, teams down there to help him with things from time to time. He'd love to talk to you about that. He'll be at the booth in his back. In fact, Tony, maybe you may want to walk your way back there now and the rest of your team if they're going to help you so you can get out before the crowd does and be there at the table. But we just sang about, right, what he was talking about from us, from the, from the, from the church of Ephesus and the book of Revelation, right? That we build ourselves, our foundation is on the love of God in our hearts. But then the last line that we sang, and lead us in your love to those around us, right? That's what he's talking about. That's who we are. That's what our Say Yes campaign is all about. I'm going to pray in a minute just to close, and we'd like to keep the sanctuary as a place of prayer, so if you want to mingle and talk, please do it out in the hallways. You can stay in your seats and pray with your friends. We'll have pastors down here if you have anything you'd like to pray with us about. And then tonight, we'd love it if you could come back. We have another organization in the community that we support, the Bravora Philharmonic Orchestra. We'll be having their season opening concert here playing the music of the world and featuring, by the way, a blind pianist. So if you want to join us for that at 7 p.m., come back here tonight. Let's pray then. Father, thank you. Thank you for your grace that you showed us that was all based on the love that you have for us. Thank you for that great love. That's what we focus on today, the love that you have for us. And Father, thank you that that love can so transform us that we can be compelled through love, not just to do a checklist for you, but to serve in your power and in your love and make a difference in other people's lives. May your kingdom spread greater just because we met here this morning and fellowshiped and learned and listened and developed relationships and prayed. So we ask as we leave with your blessing that we would honor you with our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, please keep the area for prayer and come down front if you need prayer.